situate it real quick. Let's go to uh one mic. Do one mic uh debates. Yo. So what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Ladder Friday, stationary Saturday. Hey, man. hey, it's all good, baby, baby. Hey, I'm gonna go back to Lester's uh, comment there, where he was, you know, talking about shooting a gun without without any gravity. We actually have a really good example of this, and it's how we do our actual surveying in real life. And in real life, nice. we actually look at surveys by what's called rise over run. And for anybody who doesn't know what that is, basically just like on a piece of paper, draw a couple mountains, you know, from left to right. And then did I lose y'all? Did I lose y'all? Did I lose y'all? Yeah, you went off for about Oh, my seconds. phone died. Okay. This is my first oh, no. time on uh, uh, Twitter spaces. So I guess I got to keep it, keep, keep my screen moving. Anyway, rise over run. It's straight over, you go 90 degree up, you go 90 degree to the right, you go 90 degree up, you go 90 degree to the right. Rise over run, surveying, that's how we do it. When you butt up surveys in the real world, they measure the earth flat. And so that's when they created a thing called geodetic surveying. And in geodetic surveying is where you have to, you have to give those measurements, those 90 degree rise over run measurements to the geodetic surveying committee, uh, the power that be, and then they Im impose curvature on the actual measurements that are flat. So, wow. so when he says, you know, what if I were to shoot a gun with no gravity? It, it actually goes absolutely straight on a flat so that's surface flat. that's right exactly so if that's if anybody knows so how i just proved the point it is flat it, i just proved it. it's oh well, it's it's literally measured flat that's why they created geodetic surveying in the first place they would not need geodetic surveying at all if it were actually well, measured flat hey why did they do the geodetic thing well, because he, he it's so, just told you. Yeah, because basically it's a classic. It's so big, we can't see it that way. So therefore, we need to impose it upon the actual measurements on the ground. So basically what happens is geo, like actual surveyors in, in the real world, they go measure these uh, mountains and hills and they go across miles and miles, okay? And they measure them all. And then another guy does it and they butt them up together. And when they butt them up together, there is no eight inches per mile squared in the long run. Hey, hey, hey one mic, problem. I got a question. W one mic, so if I, if what you're telling me is if I have a hundred uh, miles squared, and then, right, that's a square, and then I have another hundred miles squared, two squares next to each other, and my project is right there on the border between two squares, and my project is say, a, a five mile or, or, or so road or something like that. When I'm measuring across that border of these two 100 mile uh, squares, I don't account for any curvature? No, what actually happens, I'll tell you exactly how it happens. So the surveyors go out in the field, they make, they make their measurements. They give those measurements to the, I forget what it's called, I always do, but it's the powers that be, uh, there's a name for the, the uh, organization. That organization takes those measurements and automatically implicates, they, they times it by 0.9999923. They make all the measurements shorter, just automatically. They just do it automatically. And therefore, that way they can push it in and impose a curve on it. Because in the real world, you don't measure it flat. And that is the biggest indictment uh, of all of this shit. Everybody wants to argue all the BS. But the fact of the matter is, the guys who go on the ground and actually take the measurements, rise over run. I go straight, I go up, I go straight, I go up, I go straight, I go down, I go straight, all in 90 degree fashion. When you do that, 
it measures flat over the long run. So, so and what I'm hearing. By the way, by the way, mm-hmm. these are these are um, surveyors who have no axe to grind. They're not out there. They don't. They, all they're doing is taking measurements and then giving those measurements to the whatever it's called. It's like the AARP or some bullshit name like that. I can look it up. But basically, and they take the measurements and then impl- impose a curve upon it. And then when you Google geodetic surveying, they say, well, geodeta- geodetic surveying, that's the most accurate because that has the curve taken into account. And so anybody who's not aware of this would Google this and be like, oh, well, geodetic surveying, that's, that, uh, Google says that's the most accurate. Well, it's only the most accurate because they have artificially imposed curve where there is no curve. And it okay, is so the, yeah, go ahead. One more question, right? So, so if I'm getting this correctly, when they're doing a triangulation and they're saying, hey, we have, we, we have a triangle here and we're seeing spherical excess, that's not until the geodetic phase? I'm not even going to that place. I'm talking about you hire a surveyor to survey your property. I got 16 acres in Kansas. And that dude goes over and he surveys the elevations and draws out his survey. When you take his survey, it before it goes to the geodetic committee is what we'll call it. And somebody Google it for me because I'm scrolling my screen back and forth so I don't lose you guys. But um, bef- he takes his measurements. He has to give it to the whatever committee and they times it. They have a very specific way that they shrink it. They actually times it by like 0.999906 or something. It's, it's, it's all out there. And then, well, here's what's even more interesting. So that guy, he gets his survey done. Uh, he hires a survey company. They come out. They take rise over run. They send it to the geodetic survey, uh, U.S. whatever. They they put the measurements on it that are not true. Then, let's say five years later, this is actually how it happens. Five years later, there will be a developer who wants to build whatever in this 16 acres. That developer goes to the geodetic survey committee, sees what they times it by to shrink it, to impose curvature, and then they backwards re-engineer it. So then they'll go, okay, so this measurement, we need to times it by 1.0000076 to see what it actually is because I'm about to build a long bridge. That actually happens. That yeah, actually happens. So I, I'm right with you because I, I so I wrote about four or five articles about this topic, uh, doing some research on it. Um, and from what you're saying, it sounds exactly like what it says in all the documentation that I've looked at. Um, it's, it's flat it's, it's, until geodetics, and then geodetics is assuming an ellipsoid. It's not even assuming; it's imposing. They take yeah. the measurements from the people. The, the actual surveyors who have no ax to grind, and they don't know any better, right? They're, they're just like, hey, right. I'm a surveyor. We live on a globe. I have to give it to the <laughs> geodetic uh, authority. Somebody please look that up. But anyway, that's what they do. And, and they, they're, never, they're never the wiser, or most of them. They're, of course, there are some that are like, well, what, why the fuck are we giving these measurements to the Geodetic Survey Committee of the United States or whatever? And by the way, this is worldwide. They do it, they do it all around the world. And here's the reason why. Because they have to. Think about it. They have yeah, of course, to. they have they have their they, they have, their have to. System. It has to match up to the court. They system. have to. Well, what they they have to, because here's the thing: if they didn't do this, surveyors would go out and measure it flat as as it is actually measured. And at some point, it would be actually kind of an interesting like uh, history lesson to see when this 
survey committee came where they had to give all of their measurements to the survey committee. Like prior to that, it all measured flat. And then essentially they have to, they have to do it because it's so obviously measured flat. Yeah, so um, by the way, what do you know of, maybe you haven't looked at it at all, but in case you have, I wanna ask, what, what do you know of as like the longest uh, plane survey, like, you know, over however many miles? I've been trying to look for this as well, like something very long. I read a book about the United States, the way they survey it. I'll have to dig it up. Okay, yeah, any any info on that type of stuff, I, I love it, because that's what I feel like needs to be the focus of this uh, argument. So I, I appreciate you guys. Thank hey, you. And I, hey, hey, and I'll give you a, a nugget, what, like, uh, I guess, you know, take it for what it's worth. I know some people don't like these people or whatever, but what started my, like, journey on this rabbit hole, um, Oh, you glitched out again. He forgot to move his screen. <laughs> yeah. He's, okay. Yeah. He's that's, hey, that's annoying to say, on. man. That's annoying to have to go up and I'm, I'm scrolling. But um, uh, there was a Globe Busters episode where they had a surveyor that's been in the business for like 30 years and or whatever for for a very long time. He like lays it out pretty well. That set this whole like ball in motion. This was like a couple of years ago or something where I started like really going down this rabbit hole. I so happen to have lived next door to a surveyor like that's in the game. And he confirmed everything that this guy who's a 30 year surveyor guy said. So if, if you want to like get a, uh, essentially there's a Globe Busters episode with a surveyor. I don't know where he's from, but there's a guy that's a surveyor and he kind of like lays it out kind of almost in the way that I laid it out, but obviously much better. But um, that's a good like introduction to this issue because in my opinion, this is like kind of unequivocal the argument a lot of people like to argue a bunch of you know bs but this is like it's actually measured flat before they manipulate the data they have to manipulate the it they have to manipulate it yeah the book i read was measuring america by link later andro andro link later measuring america i read it like a decade ago and it was all about surveying the u.s that's what it was but that's interesting uh one mike and that's very very interesting so i'm glad i was able to answer ask the question and get this thought started because whatever you just said in this geodynamic mapping yeah and just so nature, yeah so they call uh, it automatically yeah so they imposed a uh, geodynamic uh, that is the weird situation imposed i don't like that word already but anyways if that's the way it is that kind of you, you almost made the argument for a flat earth, I think. And I'm telling you, w once you go down that rabbit hole, there are other ways that we measure it flat. There are other things that are super suspect, right? I mean, NASA, a lot of shit looks fake. Those kinds of things. We can look at stars and all those kinds of things. It looks flat. But this right here, these are guys who have no ax to grind. They're on the ground. They got hired to measure a piece of land. They measure it. And when you butt those pieces of land up, there ain't no eight inches per mile squared. And so that was a problem. And so they created this geodetic, geodetic surveying. It is literally a fake thing that they made up to impose the curvature. That is what it is. And they're all, they're all in collusion too, because like you said, they have to do it everywhere, the whole world, the whole world. Well, that's the whole thing. Whole like, globe. that's the thing. Here's the, oh most of, the most important thing, if you're gonna get into flat earth stuff, that I've come to realize is you have to accept, you have to get past the idea that this is a mass conspiracy. For a good reason, probably. For a good reason. Like, think about it, like back in the day, apparently they told everybody the earth was flat. And if you 
left the land, you would fall off the ocean off the end, right? They're trying to keep you contained. Now, that's just a theory, but my point is, is we need to recognize, like, if this is true, it is the biggest, cons I mean, it is a huge conspiracy. So you have to get All over that hump. the conspiracy hump. theories I've ever seen come true, though. That's the problem. Too. I know that. I know. Well, tell me you about it. You said conspiracy theory. Now I got my mind. Now I'm really, now I'm getting hot. I know. Unfortunately, I'm telling yes. you, eight, time, eight times out of ten, they come true. They kind of seem, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Such and weird. that's the thing, too. Who knows, like, to what extent, like, what it really is. Maybe maybe there is some kind of space and they're hiding it for some reason. Maybe a good reason. Maybe there's not. Maybe they're just trying to keep us contained for a good reason because we'd all go crazy. I, who knows? Who knows? But I can tell you this. I don't feel like they're telling us the truth at all. At all. Yeah, so just to like add like a little uh, I'll caveat about all that, that stuff. <clears throat> when D3 is talking about the 100 square miles, right? It could be like 10 miles in any direction. Now, they're supposed to be according to, you know, this sphere with a radius of 3,959 miles. Should be 66 feet of curvature from point A to point B, right? And 10 miles in any direction. 100 square miles. So if they're if they're like not accounting for this 66 feet of curvature that should be apparent and then stitching all these plane surveys together to create a that's, geodetic survey. That's right. That's where it comes in. And uh, right. they literally have charts and you can see it. They times it by 0.999926. They shrink everything in order to like wrap it around a ball. They like think about it. They 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 you times all they times all the measurements by point nine nine, and then when and once again when developers are ready to build on that piece of land, they do the backwards math to see what they actually got. And their feasibility period, by the way, they do that before they even purchase the land. They will put the land under contract, then go to the I'll look it up. It's the uh, fuck, I forget. It's the atmosphere. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's something. It's it's out there. They go to that. They get the table in which this survey was shrunk, and they re unshrink it to see what they're actually dealing with to to build on the land before they even close on the land. They do that in the feasibility period. And it's, by the way, this is not like, I'm not telling you, this is not controversial. I'm not telling you something that's controversial. I'm telling you, this is how developers deal with this issue. That's how out of their way they have gone to, to hide it. Because at the end of the day, the surveyors are the ones that would be able to like unequivocally show but this thing actually measures flat. There is no eight inches per mile squared over the long run. There is no curvature. It actually measures very, what very they, flat. What are they hiding? Who knows, man? I, I, I can. I'm happy to speculate with you. But uh, well, they made some massive assumptions with all this curvature stuff you're talking about. Well, yeah. I mean, when you Mass when you assumptions assumptions times a thousand. Or they're lying, or they're hiding something. Seriously, I'm just following. The I mean, money. they're no doubt hiding something. I mean, I think we can all agree that they're hiding something. Now, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. Like, what if, like, well, what, what if, what are they hiding? Who knows, dude? Who? Well, I know, I know. That's too much. I, I'm sorry, but this has been a. I, I'm glad I, I chimed in with you guys. I hopefully, post. Uh, I'm sorry that I was kind of a jerk. I didn't know the. Uh, you know how you, you know. No, no, no. It's all, it's all good. But sometimes we do open discussions. Sometimes we go to straight to the hands and oh, stuff. So. That, that's what I'm saying. But one, Mike. Wow, man, you just kind of blew me out there for a minute. I'm gonna have to sleep on this one. I'm gonna try this, to get a surveyor. Uh, 
into the space one of these one of these Fridays, and then we can really get down to it. Uh, real quick, uh, can D three can one of y'all call with me and try to help bring Proud back up? Yeah. All right. Hold on a second. Now I'm yep. gonna drop. We're all good. Do do any of you guys um uh, think uh our subway uh, not our subway <laughs> our subway <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think uh, we've gone under the water to the deep south in all directions? You talking about like at a wall? Yeah, with with submarines, not 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 our subways, our submarines. Do you think we've gone in all directions down towards the south to um, like is it because if we're considering the the flat Earth map, right? North is in the middle, south is every other direction. Uh, going away from the middle. Um, do you think we've been everywhere then? Anybody? I I honestly believe that they've probably searched every inch of that wall. I believe they've been all the way around it. I mean, that's just my thoughts. It's speculation. I can't tell you that they have, you know? Yeah, I would, I would speculate the same, though. I, I think if we... Because we, we're pretty advanced i guess with our submarines and stuff i think they can handle what's going on in the southern waters right or would I, anybody nah, know about that would i be no nah, i disagree i totally think there there's certain places they can't access in that water and they have to fly over it or that yeah hey, it could be you know the there's immense pressure in the in the deep water so the submarine cannot go all the places there's some places it will it, will, it cannot hold Okay, yeah. The ocean is unexplored. Well, I'm not saying Yeah, deep. we wouldn't have I'm, to go I'm, deep. I'm talking about... Yeah, but a submarine can go fairly deep. But I think at the depths that they can go, I think they have gone. Because if, if anything, you can have uh, ice coming out from the wall over the water where it's frozen. And they can actually, you know, if you go down deep enough, you're under the ice. And I'm I'm sure that they've 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 done that. No, they can't go under the wall. You can't go under a wall. Come on now. I'm talking about the ice coming off the wall over the water. They don't have to have ice breakers to actually get through the ice. They can actually just go under the ice. Oh, I didn't think about that, but to me a wall is a wall. You can't go under the damn thing. Unless <laughs> you dig. Unless you dig, I don't know. I'm I think they tried that too and realized they couldn't. So you, so oh, so you see. there you go. Yeah. So uh, proud. You think it's uh it's an impenetrable thing, or do you think there's a way out of it? I just think that's where I disagree with you about the technology we have to make it happen. Because mm. now they have to drill through thick, 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 deep ice underwater freezing temperatures it just doesn't seem logical i think they would have opted out and tried to fly over it or if you think like eye level from the water where they are they could drill straight through that if they felt like there was a way to drill through and up to go mm -hmm. like through it but not deep under the water with colder harder ice that would be logical they could create their own passageway what do you think about like going what do you think about flying deep over it and then landing and then and then drilling down and then like tr you know traversing that way well when jaren talked to the space force captain which i you know still can't really verify the validity of who he is but jaren probably did to some mm -hmm. degree he said that he said that they had to fly over the mount like the ice wall and at certain points it wasn't really like a huge wall he said he saw mountains with like signs you know stating once you get to this point you know what you see you're at your own risk and you hmm. probably can't come back around, but it's like, it would make sense if there are these already in existence fl fighter jets, flight jets, Air Force black op technology, drone technology that fly at higher altitudes than planes, mm -hmm. faster than jets. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they could make those black op covert missions over to get the Dragon Balls and then come back. Like, you never know. <laughs> It, it seems more logical. I think if they got tankers that are large enough to carry gas, then they just going over the ice wall. They grabbing that free 99 gas and oil and they bringing it back here to countries. So that's my yeah. stance. It's an interesting, interesting uh, 
way to think about it. We got to eventually find a way to do it one day, right? Go ahead, Ken. I love good no, I was just going to say, they, they don't they, um, I mean, I, it's speculation, but there's like, people say that there's openings in that wall. If I'm not mistaken, it's, uh, I think of it in the terms of the moon map, right? Like we're at one edge of a larger circle. And so like from middle America, it'd be like going west towards the wall is where it starts to open up into the back part of the circle or whatever. The only reason I buy that at all is because the moon moon does seem to have a map and it seems to fit with that prog clock one of my favorite maps has openings in it it's the one with the extra rings or the extra ice walls um i i, I could understand like different openings in it i don't know that i 100 percent believe that they're ground or water level with the water and the boats i feel like they would still be on the ice shelf so it would be a 25 foot wall of ice and you got a diviot of like 13 feet and then you got the other 25 foot i think that's more believable but also what do we read didn't we read it in here where they were saying somebody was saying or some paper was saying that some of these ice caps move like they float in different times of the year so to me like an opening like they could basically move ice like i don't want to say they're physically pushing boats from one island to the other but if they could find a way to have the ice in a certain position around the the openings quote unquote that would also like throw off any navigation to where you think you would pass the opening if they're not well, controlling they, that area they, anyway i've heard they use a subterrane um in the ice just like they use it in the ground like it's a submarine but it's supposed to go through the ground so they use it in the ice and one of the big pieces of the shelf that broke off was a direct result of using the, the subterrane in the ice. Like, uh, what have you people thought about what is causing this ice ring around it? What is the cause of the ice? That's well, just technically how the continents are, are laid out. I mean, Antarctica is already that size. It's cold. That that was going to be my answer. If if it's by, for example, if the ring is the end of it, right, and there is no other land outside of that that final border, then um, that would kind of be towards space, right? The, the 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 where things get really really cold, right? We know that when we go straight up, things get really really cold. Well, they're not well, allowing us it wasn't, the, it wasn't always ice the blue ice. I'm sorry, uh, two people were talking. What, what happened? Well, that it wasn't always ice covered. Like the Urbana Monte yeah. map and a lot of different maps. So it was, it was once, you know, free of ice completely, Antarctica, which is the, the shoreline that surrounds us. Was it ever in a different position geographically? No, no, it's a, it's a shoreline that surrounds us. It was always no. I mean, when it wasn't time. covered in ice, right? It's just the same. And also, in that map, I noticed there were many things like uh, these mythological creatures, like the horseman, dragons. There were some antelopes, lions. Yeah, there was some weird shit on that map too. Yeah, all, all we got is speculation, right? Like we don't know how the weather really works down down at that area. Um, Hold on, I someone asked about is it always been? I uh, I think it was proud. Yep. Has that ice wall always been in the same position? Now I'm going back to my weevil wobble theory. Now I'm <laughs> flipping back the globe. Now hold on. Now I have seen documentaries where they and someone said dragons. And like all along the coastline of like South America and everything, if you look at it, and the guy did this thing, and it did look like a dragon's foot. We're done. I'd say the wall looks like a big tree, 
then you got that tree in Wyoming. I I suspect over millennia that ice wall has traversed, depending on how this globe is weeble wobbling or the flat Earth is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's been in the same place every time. I think. Hey, listen. But, I think that is to me one of the best points actually because a lot of times I say the uh, the pyramids were built at the time it was like a thriving uh, you know uh, uh, a jungle type area right so like I think that is something that uh, is interesting it does seem like the earth does change its climates throughout the areas at, a, at the very least the pyramids were underwater at one point right but at one point I, I agree with that but at one point it seems like um it does seem like what were deserts at one point were under oceans and then what were deserts at one point were uh tropical paradises it does seem like there is this global shift to me personally nah, global. which is well, yeah, very well. A flat shift of some sort. Of some sort, it does seem like things do change throughout areas. Now, I will fully admit, maybe I'm buying into um, propaganda of some sort, or no, maybe that's the wrong word. Uh, the conventional wisdom of the day, maybe that was always a desert. But it is hard for me to believe that they built all of that in a desert at the time. Whoever built it. Is Pangea a, a global desert. conspiracy? Or or do you guys actually believe that that happened? I don't know. I'm I'm happy to question it. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, I, I think it it's happened. speculation, but the Hold on. the continents really do match up, don't they? One mic. Proud, you, you said Pangea, something? what'd you call? What'd you say? One mic. Sorry. There's something you said about uh what was it? I said it it, 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 it it appears to me that climates of areas yeah, the have, have yeah, changed, about the have like gone through yeah, the, the earth is going through gone through different dramatic cycles. changes and cycles. I, I don't know about cycles, but yeah. at least changes. Now, of course, a lot of folks believe there was like a massive flood at one point, which it seems to me that I believe that I, that, you know, I don't know what I believe, but it seems like that's likely to be true, like a massive flood. Um, but with all of that said, like one thing I think we all need to acknowledge is like there's a desert with these pyramids out there that to me probably wasn't a desert when they built that shit. But I don't know I that. I don't know that. Cycles. You know, I'm just it's throwing. Been... Yeah. There's a long cycle and there's a short cycle. The longest cycle we have is 26,000 years. This also goes with civilization, climate, and many other things. The shortest cycle that we have is 300 years, 400 years, and the the next most impactful cycle is for 3,000 years. Well, 6, here's my years. whole this thing. This is where you see civilizations die. Let me, let me push back on that. Civilizations die, or people, I'm gonna or put... community just yeah. doesn't function anymore because the climate kind of drastically changed where the waterways drastically change, where they, they had set up their civilization, they could never no longer sustain it, they had to move to other places. There are many places you can find that. People used to live here, they build structures, and then everybody left all of a sudden. Yeah. It is because of these changes in, in cycles. Well, and, and obviously, uh, it seems to me like that, first of all, I don't like the word cycles. I'll go into that in just a second. But it does seem to me that there are such dramatic changes in areas where you will have, you know, for example, um, pyramids built in the uh, rainforests of South America that have just been discovered, and you know things things of that nature, where it's like, well, so things are happening, um, but I don't like the word cycles because um, I know people like to say things are cyclical, like especially like the market and things of that nature, but um, it's just changes, it's changes. When you say cycles, it, it sounds like it's predictable. 
It sounds like, okay, well, this is yes, the it's cycle. It's going to happen that's again. Saying, exactly. Yeah, I don't like that word. You don't seasons. know it's going to happen on. again. Every year, every year there's four seasons, and it, these cycles keep on repeating itself. Also, these changes that I'm talking about, they keep on repeating themselves in those intervals of years. Well, we don't, it's a constant thing that you can predict. We don't, we know, but so we can't predict. It's repetitive. We can't predict it's not that. random. We can't predict that. It's random. It is predictable. What, what, it's not random. What, what's predictable? Where's the next? For example, if you look at where is the next desert? On. If you look at ancient civilizations that have lived through these ages, like if you look at India, they talk about the yugas and all these things. They're talking about these cycles. They have different cycles, bigger cycles, smaller cycles. They studied them. Even the Aztec calendar is just about studying the cycles. They studied the pattern of the cycles and how it changes things on Earth. Okay, no, hold These on, hold on. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. There are cyclical things um, in nature, for sure, like uh, the stars. Those are cyclical. Like, there are things that happen in nature that are cyclical. My point is, is a recognition of a degree of chaos, if you will, where there was once a very thriving tropical area that is now seems to be a desert. And the evidence of that, that was once a thriving area, tropical area where they built pyramids with golden tops are now deserts without golden tops and everybody raided you know, the sighting of it. So like, um, that's why that's why I'm pushing back on the word cyclical, because people like to say that about markets and they're not actually, well, some markets are cyclical, but my point is, is you can't say that as an overarching, just because it's this way, it's always gonna be this way. Like it, what goes around comes no, around, well, sometimes it doesn't come around. The same events usually happen during specific star alignments. Every time, never misses. So it's very predictable. What say again? What, what say that again? Most of these cycles usually happen during specific star alignments. So it, people can never miss. It's always predictable. I missed it again, man. Maybe other people are getting it. He said, uh, so what's, he said what's it's always happening at the same time, so it's always predictable. Um so yeah, yeah, that, that's but said. I mean, are are you trying to say that Egypt was all, always a desert? Not necessarily. For example, even that desert, many people don't understand. They never explain to you where that sand is coming from. All that sand was not there. Well, I know, but that's There's my more point. Story to that. <laughs> it's not cyclical. You can't mm -hmm. say that as this overarching. Everything is cyclical. When we're talking not about everything climate is. and weather, it's cyclical. But humans, with their technology, they can do whatever they want. You know, whatever they do will not be part of the cycle. Maybe the cycle may influence their mindset and all this other thing. But whatever they do is not part of the cycle. But let's say a place becoming a cold desert or a dry desert, whatever it is, that cycle, cycle nature can be can be known because the pattern is repeatable. Yeah, but here's the problem. With here, here, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. We have monolithic things that I don't even know if we could do it today that are in crazy places <laughs> that, you know, no humans today would go create those monolithic structures. So we have all these things of what's an ancient history. I think we all need to come to terms with that. There is an ancient history here we do not know. And it fucking pisses me off. All of these people, they're like, oh, well, we, we know what, blah, blah, blah. No, we don't know. We don't know. Me, I'm speaking for myself because I study these things individually. And I get where you're coming from. Most of the archaeologists that are sponsored, and they speak like they know what they're saying, but they don't really know. Nobody knows. But me, even when I do my research in terms of history and all this thing, I also try to connect energetically and spiritually and look at the landscape at those times and I get a lot of information that you might not get in a missing in a in a remnant of a cup or something like that or a broken jar. The Here, the psychic the, energy of a civilization is always there. Here, here's the problem though, and you can and not to cut you off, but mm -hmm. here's the problem. You have things like pyramids with certain types of blocks that they don't know really where they came from, but they can guess. They ain't anywhere near. So you have, you have, I'm not just talking about the pyramids. We, we have thousands of examples of this, of things built, monolithic structures built 
that we have no idea where it came from, and it doesn't look like it has any cyclical, quote unquote, um, uh, residue. Hey, it uh, looks one like mic. we have no idea where this shit came from. Yeah, one mic. That's that's not what he's saying. I think you guys are kind of arguing past each other here. Okay. Uh, what, what he, he he, he's talking about he's talking about the Earth itself having particular cycles, disasters being one of them. And that they are that those disasters are predictable. Now, what humans do in between those disasters, he was saying, it's, it's that's not the predictable part, right? That's not predictable. Oh, so what we build so, and all of that stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So cool? what he's, uh, yeah. So what he, uh, just to be clear, what, and he can correct me if I'm wrong. What he's saying is we are, uh, you know, flying through a space vacuum around a sun, and we can predict the way that that ball, that rock goes through the space vacuum, and we can get some idea of the cyclical natures of how we go, I guess, closer and outer to the sun or something of that nature. Maybe he can help you with that. No, I didn't say anything about spinning around anything. These cycles, they're just waves, even you can observe them in the ocean. Waves, they're just part of cycles. Sometimes they have constructive interference and destructive interference. This affects the vortices that is forming around the earth that causes the dryness or, or the tropical climates to exist in places. Yeah. The places that are called now that used to be tropical because of the kind of vortices that were there. Yeah. These vortices are influenced by the energy of the stars and everything around us. They all work together to shape what just like you slapping water it will affect the other end of the water in one way or another it's not an individual thing it's a collective collective shift in some sort of a way and it has nothing to do with the globe okay. it's just how energy gotcha does. that's why they, they find these patterns in the stars they find this pattern in the stars and the patterns in the stars relate to the things that happen on the ground always yeah, no, so almost in a um uh astro uh, astro astrological sense, there are like times of um uh, I don't know what your views on astrology are, but uh if I'm even saying that right, but regardless, are you saying there are like times of chaos, there are times of um peace and those things are naturally cyclical within our world. The, you can say that, but you can put the peace and all those things in terms of climate, a uh, peaceful climatic condition, a very uh, harsh climatic condition, very cold and all these things, but not in terms of human being peaceful and praying. I'm not sure. Okay. That hey, cycle. that's a hey, great, great response to that. Great response to that question. Now, let me ask you this. With that being said, do you feel like um, if you had perfect information, you could predict the cyclical nature of this. If you had perfect information, like you, you, if yeah, there are those who predicted and migrated. There are those who did not predict 